I want to talk now to Joshua McGill, who escaped this deadly attack. Um, you were in the club last night with two friends, and I'm sorry to have to speak to you about uh, this tragedy. But uh, it's a fine. It's but, fine. No, but I'm going to tell you. I, I say that you're a hero, and I'll explain your story. But how are you doing right now? Uh, I'm exhausted. I quite haven't had any downtime to actually comprehend what's going on. But I mean, I've always been more of a calm, collected person, anyway. So, I mean, I'm just kind of taking it one step at a time and processing the way I know how, which is like you know, music and just chillax. So you weren't supposed to be here. You were working, you work for the, the people who own Pulse. You were supposed to, you were working at their sister club. It's not like the same owners, but we say we're sister clubs because right. um, when their bartenders or whoever are off, they go to so our you club. So help each other out. But yeah, we yeah. all come so to each friendly. other. you're friendly. Basically. So the, and then you showed up at what time? Um, my roommates and I, last minute, 11.45, the latest. Um, we were there before midnight. Um, we were in the corner main bar next to our favorite bartender, Kate. Um, she takes care of us all night, and there's actually an exit to the patio bar area right next to Kate. Like, literally, I can push right my so arm. So you got out quickly. That's so how tell me quickly. what happened, though, as you were standing there with what your friends. What happened was around 145 was the last call for alcohol. So everyone's rushing to the bar, close out their tabs, drink another water drink another drink, what's, whatever not. Um, our roommate was like, I'm ready to close it out. So Kate's really busy. She's a very popular bartender. It took her about, you know, five, 10 minutes to get the print out. My roommate literally so could signed. You hear, but could you hear the, yeah. He signed it and then we heard the three gunshots, boom, boom, boom. Wow. It sounded like it came from the main entrance, which is totally across where we were, but it's, yeah. you know, I couldn't see anything. I didn't see a, face of a person. So did people start scrambling after that, right? It was kind of like an automatic response. When you hear something like a loud bang, you kind of just like do like a half duck. Right. So we kind of all did that. And then someone next to my roommate just grabbed her, pulled her down. She pulled me down and I pulled my other roommate down. And he was like, that wasn't like a sound blow from the speaker. That was- a, That's real. That's so real. let's get to your story. So you were you started helping someone out. You you pulled someone under a car who had been injured. And there's a shot, we have a shot of your pants that are that are bloodied. Yeah. So take us through that story, what happened? Um, we had jumped through the back patio fence. My roommates ran and then while we're running, I heard the gunshots and I got scared because I didn't want to get like hit in a crossfire. So I jumped behind a car or SUV. I'm hiding behind it. Um, the shots were fired multiple more times. They got a little further away than uh, they were before, so I figured it was my time to run to the safety area that the cops had set up for a uh, perimeter. That's when I saw um, Rodney kind of struggling, limping Rodney's around. Rodney's a victim. He is the right. victim. He um, had multiple gunshot wounds, one in each arm, and then later I found out one was in his upper right area of his back. Um, Pulled him over behind the car and I told him, you know, everything will be okay. I got you. Uh, just calm down. I was like, I need to cut off as much blood, blood as I can. So I took my shirt off, tied it around his one arm as tight as I could, took off his shirt, tied around his other arm. And then I didn't know about the back one until I went to go like help him walk um, and dodge through cars to get to the safety area. And that's when he was like, oh my God, my back hurts. I looked at my hand, covered in blood, um, so I just held it as high as I could. We get to the safety zone, officer, whomever, was like, all right, you guys stay down. There's a, a, a guy standing by. I just looked at him and said, give me your shirt, and he gave it me his shirt. I used it to cover up his uh, back, the wound on his back. Yeah. And um, I want to show the audience, this is a picture of your jeans, or you know, the bloody jeans, if we can put that up. That, uh, and you said you took off your shirt, and that's all of that's Rodney's blood. Yeah, there's actually probably still some of my shoelaces. And you said that you were able to, and it, because I don't know if his family, family's been notice, notified, but just say his first name, but he's fine, you heard, right? Rodney, yes. I went to the hospital today. Um, I couldn't see him because he was still in the emergency department, um, but they did say he was stable. So, I mean, on the way to the hospital, um, the officer had him lay on top of me, and I had to bear hug him. And you were making all kind of promises to him. You said was, you didn't know you could keep, to keep him to stay awake. Yeah, I had to, that's how I had, got him to stay conscious. What's your name? Where are you from? How old are you? I promise you'll be okay. Uh, I don't know if you're religious. I am, but I promise you, God's got this. Uh, you'll be okay. And I was mainly scared. I was like, God, please don't let me hit my brick. I promise. Mm -hmm. And so we get to the hospital. He gets on the stretcher and they take him away. You didn't see him, but you, 
you're a hero. Thank you. I tried. Thank, Thank you very you so much. much. I'm, so no glad, I'm glad that you're okay. Thank you. And Thank I'm glad you. that you were able to help.